Dear Archimites, so the worst has happened. The news we did not want to hear came and it seems like they don't want to let us enjoy a season four of our beloved Batwoman. To be honest with you, we were in complete shock. We had all this content planned, what we would do whilst waiting for a new season in the fall, and we didn't even consider the possibility of not having a new season to wait for. So we had to take a break and rethink what we wanted to do and we reached the conclusion that we wanted to stay. We want to stay here for you and we want to stay in the fight for this show. But before we get into all that and in light of this news, we just sincerely hope you are doing okay or, you know, the best that you can be at this moment. Uh, Fran, Ines, how have you been doing? Is there anything you might want to get off your chests? Um, I've been quite sad, I think, is the overall mood since these news. Um, like you said, they were very unexpected and kind of hit like a train. And they really made me realize that Batwoman is one of the only things I've been looking forward to. So it's been kind of hard having to deal with that um, and with knowing the show might not come back. But, you know... Other than that, you know, life's been life. Uh, it doesn't stop just because we're having a bad day. So I've been trying to push forward and keep moving. Mm. Yeah, I feel I feel like we've been around for a long time, haven't we? Like this is far from being our first TV show cancellation and disappointment. So mm -hmm. yeah, in that sense, even though I really thought that we were going to get a fourth season. Um, we were all acting like it was already true, <laughs> honestly, ever yeah. since uh, the ending of the third season and all of that. But the cancellation wasn't that big of a slap in the face, just purely because I have been here before. Um, mm -hmm. For me, what, was been, what has been the hardest part is when I actually stop and think about what a, ca a cancellation actually means. And when it hits me that I'll never see these characters again... That really hurts. Uh, the fact that we decided to create a podcast from scratch for this show. First of all, it really is a testament to the show that it inspires this much uh, for us to have all this work. Uh, because the podcast is a lot of work. So only a, a really inspiring and a show that really moves us could um, motivate us to do all this. Uh, but it also did give us an attachment to these characters, you know, going through... Um, all of their little moves each episode during an entire season and uh, that is something that's so unique and special and a relationship that I haven't had with a show for a really long time you know maybe since our, yeah. our glee days or something um, so you know talking about them and their growth every week preparing these episodes really really reflecting on each episode They became such a huge part of our lives. And to think that if Batwoman doesn't get picked up by another network, that will simply just disappear is really heartbreaking. I'll Most of all, I'll miss Ryan, Sophie, Alice, Mary and Luke like I would miss an actual friend. Mm -hmm. This is so sad already and we've <laughs> just started the episode now. Now, this is usually the time where we promote the podcast and our socials, but given the situation, I'm just going to do a quick rundown for anyone that's new. Uh, I'm sorry that you just arrived <laughs> at this part. Um, this podcast worked as a weekly commentary mm -hmm. on Batwoman episodes, and we are usually way more cheery, fun and chaotic than we'll probably be today. It will probably be kind of a sad episode but we'll do our, our best um, it was just our fun place to gather and fun girl over our favorite characters our favorite chips and that is what we want to highlight today so this episode will work as a batwoman appreciation episode where we will be talking about our favorite storylines our favorite characters chips villains all of it We also asked some lovely people in the fandom for some help and we will also be discussing what Batwoman means for us. I predict some emotes here, so this is your warning beforehand. Before we start though, we want to promote the very important campaign account uh, at Save Batwoman on Twitter, 
who are doing the most amazing project the whole month to trend the hashtag HBO Max Save Batwoman and really make some noise for the show to get picked up by HBO Max and avoid cancellation. So, if you're not already participating, please do it. It's a great initiative and you can share your favorite things about the show with a lovely fandom. So, really, it's, it's a win-win. And speaking of, let's go share some bat love. I was thinking we can start this episode by going back to the very beginning. If you didn't know, Inesh was actually the one who started watching Batwoman and then convinced me and then Fran to watch it too. So Inesh, tell us what interested you about this show to check it out and what were your first impressions of it? Um... Our listeners probably don't know this. Uh, I'm not sure I've mentioned it before, but I work for a site that reviews TV shows and posts about TV in general, uh, as well as the two of you. <laughs> but um, <Yeah. laughs> so when the trailer for the first season of Batwoman came out, I really wasn't looking to start yet another Arrowverse project. Um, the shade. <laughs> You know, yeah, we have a lot of shade to go around today, but <laughs> I wasn't looking forward to starting another Arrowverse show at all. Uh, but the moment the trailer came out, I started seeing a lot of people talk shit about it in like this huge way. Like it was unavoidable, the shit that people were talking about it. Yeah. So I watched the trailer myself and it did suck. It was that one trailer at the beginning that... Um, made the show look super woke in like the worst possible way <laughs> in the most annoying fucking SJW you know doesn't really mean much all for the aesthetics type of way um but you know I thought to myself you know if anyone's gonna be trashing a show with a lesbian lead it's gonna be me <laughs> <laughs> like I don't trust dusty straight white men's opinion on this show period uh, period even, even when javicia wasn't the lead so i was like no i'm gonna watch this shit myself i'm gonna make up my own mind if it sucks it sucks but i'm gonna be the one to say it um so i used uh to tie this back in with uh the website we work for um i used my position as a reviewer kind of as an excuse to look into the show and I was not expecting at all to like it. Uh, if I'm honest, like from the trailer, it did look bad. Like there's no <laughs> going around that. But as we can tell by now, that shit backfired quick on me uh, because here we are and I love that woman. <laughs> <laughs> so while that woman was not a masterpiece at all in the beginning, it just got better after a few episodes. And I'm usually someone who's very character driven. So I immediately started gravitating and getting attached to Sophie, Mary, Luke, Alice, and even Kate, I'll be honest. But what really got me into the show, despite this great ensemble of characters, was the storytelling. Because I was watching a CW show, which, you know, besides being an Arrowverse show, being a CW show is also kind of, you know, let's, let's not get into it. Uh, but <laughs> I wasn't expecting anything, you know, and suddenly I get into a show with good storytelling, where you can tell that they're not doing this uh, episode by episode thing, like they have an idea for yeah. the season, and they have plots that develop through the season, actually. And I was very pleasantly surprised by the writing and the storytelling in this. So I really became attached to the show and started, you know, defending it and seeing... And telling what... all your friends to watch it. Of course. Yes. Always. <laughs> Always. Um, but, but yeah, it was, it was a fun time. And Yufra, what were your first impressions? I, I got emotional reading this part of the script for today's episode even now hearing Ines speak because it really took me down memory lane so Ines gave her context I'll give mine um, 
both Inez and Anna basically lured me into watching Batwoman with the promise <laughs> we of buying me dinner. With the promise of buying me dinner, which, by the way, they still owe me. They still have not bought me that dinner. And I watched the whole thing. And I joined the podcast project. <laughs> and I still <laughs> haven't eaten the dinner. dinner. <laughs> uh, but at the time, I was studying abroad. And that's always quite a lonely situation. So our daily video calls to watch Batwoman were often the highlight of my day. So thinking back now, that makes me even more grateful for this show mm. and for bringing Aww. us together. As for first impressions, honestly, uh, I'm a huge superhero fan. I had not watched that infamous trailer that Inej was talking about. Um, Thank I was God. going in cold. I and have. because <laughs> Yeah, because I'm not really into Arrowverse or anything, I hadn't seen that much hate. Uh, I did get some waves of it because it was unavoidable, but I wasn't... Uh, completely um, molded by it going into the show. I was quite a blank canvas um, with what I expected. Um, but I did have some uh, preconceptions about Arrowverse. I wasn't a part of the Arrowverse for a reason, because I love superhero shows, but the few that I had uh, watched from the Arrowverse did not make a good impression on me. Just, I don't... I don't even want to go as far as to say they were bad quality or anything, bad writing. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's just it didn't connect with me personally. The type of storytelling that they were doing with those shows compared to other shows that I was watching. Uh, but there was one thing that I knew about Batwoman and that it completely went uh, differently to the other Arrowverse shows that it was gay as hell. <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, so from that point, just from that um, aspect, I was sold. But Inez and Anna had told me that season one wasn't so great and that I just needed to stick with it to get to the good bits. But I was having fun from the very first episode, honestly. I don't take my television shows too seriously. In fact, with TV, I prefer something a little more overdramatic and cliche than uh, very artsy or anything. That's more for films for me. So Batwoman to me was perfect entertainment from the start. And like Inish said, it only got better and better. So uh, my first impression was, I love this and I want to watch the rest of it, basically. But I also think because we told you we didn't like it that much. So your expectations were already low. <laughs> and sometimes True. that's a good thing because you're just True. pleasantly surprised. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, to be fair, when we rewatched, uh, because at that point when you started watching, I was rewatching the first the first season for the third time. Um, it got better, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, a funny story. I actually watched the first two episodes because Ines told me to check it out, but. I, I wasn't into my superhero shows. Uh, I was a huge Arrowverse show and I watched all of it. Arrow was my life at the time. And also um, with a lot of other fans, I've been super traumatized by, you know, what happened with Arrow and all that. So I, I checked the first two episodes and I told Inish, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> You're already dreading it. You were like, if I get into this, it's just going to be another trauma. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and I don't know, because I wasn't um, watching so much of the superhero genre. I thought it wasn't for me anymore. It was a part of my life that I didn't like anymore. But funny enough, I did like the Alice twist. So <laughs> when Inesh told me it gets much better... And I literally just wanted to know what's happening with um, Alice, why she hates Kate so much. That was the hook for me. That was the thing in the first two episodes that I wanted to find out. And so I gave it another chance. And then I fell in love with, you know, uh, Mary, Luke, like everyone that you get to know better in season one. And then I think it only just gets better from there. But it's funny That's that real. Alice was the hook for me. <laughs> Because she's yeah, still my real, favorite. Like, was she not the hook for everyone in season one? True. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she carried that season. Come on. So, yeah. Not a lot has changed, I think. Except the, the show is so much better. And like I said, a lot has changed. But 
the it remains kind of the same. So I want to know how do you think the show has changed and how did it change from your first impressions? Uh, my opinions of the show only changed for, for the better, if I'm honest, with the following seasons. Um, like, of course, there were a few things here and there that weren't exactly to my liking. I mean, we have the podcast exactly to talk about, not just we, what we liked about the show, but what we didn't like. Yeah. But since this episode is an appreciation episode, um, you know, I'll just say that no show is perfect. And Batwoman is pretty up there for me with uh, being very fucking enjoyable, having this fleshed out, very dynamic, very personable characters um mm -hmm. and you know i just think that my opinion of the acting certainly improved my opinion of the writing actually improved despite enjoying the, the writing in season one very fucking much um i think just the show got bolder with every season that came yeah um and I really appreciate that. It wasn't stagnant. It wasn't always one and the same. We just kept leveling up in every sense of the way. And yeah, my opinion is that at the end of the day, Batwoman might not be a masterpiece, but if meritocracy was real, like, let's be <laughs> honest, it was the best show on the CW at the moment. Storytelling wise, acting wise maybe um just you know it's a shame that it was let go the world is a little bit poorer now without batwoman absolutely to me the show was always about cool action and big plots and a lot of statements of empowerment so in season one it was more focused on lgbt plus rights which really lured me in Mm -hmm. And as it progressed to a lot of other social issues like police brutality in season two and mental health in season three, it just continued delivering on this image that I had of it from the start, but making it bolder like Inej was talking about. So basically the first few episodes created an image of what the show could be in my mind and week in and week out, it only confirmed and surpassed my expectations. Um, it never stopped being wildly engaging and necessary and again so freaking bold um, and I think in the end the boldness was a shot in the foot because people aren't ready for Batwoman let's be real exactly uh, it's sorry sorry to interrupt but it's like when a show is too progressive people you know praise it but then you get the other half of the people that are just not ready for it it's just too outside of their comfort zone, but I think it says something about the show. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, like, in a few years, watch people be like, hey, why didn't this show get hyped up? Yeah, like, and... top underrated shows list kind of thing. But literally, and I think uh, something that I love about that woman is that it has been tackling social issues from the first season, but it's never done it for mm -hmm. brownie points. Even with yeah. Kate and LGBT issues in the first season, it was just a part of these character lives, but it wasn't their whole lives. Um, mm -hmm. She was a lesbian, so she had to deal with all this bullshit. Uh, you know, Ryan was a black lesbian, so she had to deal with even more bullshit. But it wasn't, the show wasn't like, so this character is a lesbian and this show is about homophobia. No. It was about mm -hmm. stopping crime, just like every other superhero show, but these characters had these identities that society isn't so accepting of, so obviously the show couldn't run away from that, and instead it did it in a really... Um, it was very well um, weaved into the show. Yeah, I agree with you in everything you just said, Fran. Uh, when I mentioned Batwoman looking like a, a woke show, with that first trailer, it's exactly that. It looked like, you know, flashy, hollow messages at mm -hmm. the beginning, but it proved out to be not at all like that. And I really like the nuanced way in which they introduce these storylines. I like that they are, like you said, not, I mean, not not the focus because they are kind of the focus, but they're just organic in the way that they show up. Absolutely. They show up in relation to the characters and to elevate the characters and to add depth and dimension to them. Um, and you can very clearly tell that 
like you said, they're not there for brownie points. They're there because it makes sense that they're there. And I really appreciated that about the, sh the show. And I think it was one of my favorite aspects of it, this social uh, commentary aspect that they have. Um, and, you know, it spoke to my heart in many ways, still does. And I, I think that's why so many of us are still in this fight to, to try and get the show to at least have a fourth season to, to close it up. Because Batwoman really, despite having a, a relatively small, quote unquote, you know, uh, following, um, it really moved the people that did watch it. Uh, I don't think there's anyone that was indifferent towards the storylines being yeah. portrayed in Batwoman. Small uh, but mighty. And, yeah, and not many shows do that these days. Um, actually, I can think of any that does it the way Batwoman does, but that's because I haven't been watching much television lately. So the few that I did watch, I think, did that very poorly. Um, and Batwoman just... It just worked, you know? Yeah. Now, I know these three seasons have been one hell of a journey and we could be here all day if we were to talk about everything that happened. Yeah, especially so, knowing our history. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought a fun way to sum up what storylines were the most meaningful to us. We would do a top three Batwoman storylines kind of thing, if you're up for it. Mm-hmm. I can go first and tell you my third choice and we can hear your third choices and so on and we, we reveal our favorite. Although I have to say I didn't really put them in order because I think from those three I can't really decide <laughs> what my favorite is. And I know Ines said we should do a top five to be more fair, but then we'd be here all day. <laughs> so I tried. Exactly. Ines, I tried. <laughs> Look, that isn't an issue for me. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So my third one, which isn't really in order, you know, I think it's the Alice's Beth Kane storyline and all that involves. You know, I talked about how the twist of knowing why Alice hated Kate so much was the hook for me. And I think that just continued and that made season one for me. It was the um, slowly finding out what the hell happened and how Beth has become a whole different person to cope. And it was hands down my favorite storyline, one of my favorite storylines from the whole show. And it just solidified why I love Alice so much because she's just so complex and I'm so interested in just how she had to find that whole person to cope and how complex her relationship with Kate was and how she still has a lot of trouble finding, uh, finding ways to connect to people in that way and in trusting people. And I think it all came from this storyline. And yeah, it's just, I love it so much. My third choice is... Uh, we talked about this a little bit. It's not necessarily a storyline. It's more of an overarching plot, but I picked Sophie's journey with her sexuality. Um, mm -hmm. I almost didn't include this because, again, I wasn't sure if it counted as a storyline, but it has been for sure one of the most gratifying journeys to follow throughout the show. Uh, it happened uh, very slowly throughout the three seasons. Um, and it was amazing to watch. And I think, honestly, if I can be really really honest I think Megan did more with it than was exactly on paper um, mm -hmm. yeah she really nailed it and had it been any other actress that wasn't as uh, invested in Sophie and bringing that character to life then maybe it would have been a lot more lackluster but because it was Megan and because she loves Sophie so much she did a lot more with what she was given and made it um, a very emotional ride for, for me and one of the best that I've seen, even though it was so uh, in the shadows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely. It's no surprise to me that sh that Fra and I share uh, the third spot because my <laughs> yeah. third spot is also Sophie's journey. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, with coming to terms with 
and embracing her sexuality. As a closeted lesbian, this wa watching her was very healing for me, in a way. I felt very seen by, by Sophie and, like you said, by Megan, most of all, and how she advocated for her. Because back in season one, when Kate was still on the pic in the picture, uh, people didn't quite seem to, to grasp Sophie's, um, Sophie's journey and how she just didn't have the same life and the same possibilities to be who she was in comparison to Kate. Uh, like she had her family to consider and to provide for. She wasn't this, you know, millionaire, not playboy, but playgirl. Um, <laughs> Uh, and she just had a lot on her plate and the weight of people's expectations over her. And that resounded a lot with me. And to, to watch people, you know, be very anti-Sophie because she wasn't out and about the way Kate was. And then seeing Megan defend her and be like... You know, she didn't get the chance that Kate did. It meant a whole lot to me because I felt personally very validated because I'm also in the position I'm in, not because I don't want to come out, but because it's not easy to come out. I, I, I'm not in the exact same situation that Sophie was with her family, but, you know, not to get too personal, there's a lot on my plate too um, and sometimes it feels like it would be just another thing to add to the pressure that people put on you or to you know give ammunition to people who might want to hurt you um, it's just another part of yourself that's very personal and very near and dear and you know it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable I think and Sophie is just one of my favorite characters in the show and I hope I know Megan feels like Sophie wasn't done right in season three specifically and I do agree with her but I hope that she does know how much Sophie has impacted a lot of people yeah uh, I just want to add a one little thing is that I was I went back and forth with Sophie especially just because at that point in season one I had been thinking to myself, like, enough coming out storylines for gay characters in shows. We've done that already. There's more to us, you know. Um, but then with Batwoman, there was, uh, especially because I'm very against the concept of coming out. I don't think anyone should ever come out. Like, having Big the same. whole mm -hmm. conversation, that's just ridiculous because straight people don't have to do that. Um so with, you know, Sophie having to make a big statement or whatever, which eventually she did not make, which I loved. Um, she mm -hmm. did come out to her mom, but it wasn't, you know what I mean? But I was like, okay, yeah. another uh, coming out storyline. I kind of want to go into these characters as they're already out, just because as much as coming, uh, coming out storyline is important, it's been done already and I want to see more things. But then because Batwoman had so many gay characters, I could have that access point in so many mm -hmm. different ways. So I could have the already out storyline. I could have the struggling with her sexuality storyline. I could have the nonchalant gay storyline who doesn't even see it as a political issue, which was kind of the deal with Julia. And um, and that's, that's why I just put that aside so completely for Sophie and really saw her storyline in a different way because coming in, I was like, okay, I, I've seen this character a million times. But then it's, I think it was straight up just Megan's performance it just added mm -hmm, so yeah. much to it and it wasn't just just that storyline again and again it was way deeper than that and again because we created the podcast because it was such a thing with our friendship this show the Sophie just became a lot more than just the character on the screen so at one point I was just like just I just hope she's safe I just hope she's happy whatever she decides to do mm-hmm and I really like that they didn't make it, um, I don't want to say linear, but as simple as, you know, she's gay. That's it. Um, I liked the added layer of that commentary her mom made. Like, it's not enough that you're black, you also want to be gay too. Yeah. Uh, 
like there's levels of oppression there that Batwoman didn't shy away from. And I'm glad we didn't actually get to see it. Like, I'm very happy we never got to see Sophie being hate crime, you know? Uh, I think that would have been a downer, despite, you know, possibly being true to life. I think it would have been really a downer. But I do like that they didn't forget that about her. That she she doesn't have the same privileges someone would have. But also that... You know, she didn't choose to be black and she didn't choose to be a lesbian. So um, I feel like everything ar around that storyline was very fucking important. And the only reason why it's in my third place, it's because, like you said, it was played out in the shadows a lot. And I wanted to see a bit more of it. Absolutely. Uh, not, in the, not in the overwhelming sense. Like, I didn't, like you said, I didn't want her whole story to be about her coming out. But I did want to see more of it. More of her struggle. More of Sophie with her family. More of Sophie with her sister. Um, and we never got that. And I think we would have gotten that in a fourth season, actually. I know. Uh, with Ryan, yeah, with Ryan possibly meeting Jordan. Meeting yeah, Sophie's Jordan. mom. Um, I think it would have been really nice. I actually do think that season four would have been uh, Megan's and Sophie's season. And but, you know, with whatever, Sophie whatever. becoming commissioner, her sexuality would be a huge deal. So, exactly. Yeah. Commissioner more agenda <laughs> never ends. And I think you just noticed that she's in the shadows because obviously with Kate her sexuality was very much, you know, out. And also you could see her, you know, hooking up and it was a very casual thing. And while with Sophie, it was also a casual thing, as in it wasn't her whole identity. We didn't spend nearly as much time dealing with her situation as we did with Kate. And I think that's the biggest difference, you know. There's a difference between... Uh, making it seem like it's it's not her whole identity, but also giving it time to develop. And I think you could tell that it wasn't done uh, as much as it could have been, even if it was in the shadows. I don't know if it makes sense. Mm -hmm. No, it does. It does. Okay. She just needed a more screen time, period. <laughs> exactly. Period. Like, doesn't Literally. matter how it was, she just needed more time to, you know, develop that part. Mm -hmm. It literally could have been my number one pick. Yeah. <laughs> but oh well. Okay, so my second spot goes to Ryan becoming Batwoman. I know it's a big storyline, but I thought I would just um, sum it up like that. I just love Ryan so much and that storyline is done with so much care not wanting to make Ryan the substitute of Kate, but showing why Ryan could be, you know, the perfect Batwoman because she has a different life situation and different things she can bring to the table. And I, I just thought it was incredible how the writers did that. And it wasn't just a, a woke thing, you know. Um, a queer, black, low-class woman who has been wrongfully done by the system finally gets a chance to make things right and use, you know, her own unique situation to help others and not only help others, but relate to them, you know. she it, It's a very different position that she's in and I just thought they, they wrote it perfectly. Um, as people might have noticed, we are very much left-wing in our <laughs> in our views. So this for me is so much more appealing than Kate, you know, just a billionaire or even Batman, just a billionaire who did it for the fun of it. I think it just added so many layers and social meanings that the show already had, but it, it just became so much more... Um, Organic, you know, it just made sense the the themes of social social injustice that we got to explore in season two and further. Absolutely, mm -hmm. Inez, you want to say your second storyline? <sighs> <laughs> I don't want to say it because, as we mentioned about a billion times while making the top three, uh, it keeps changing. But I'm gonna place. Alice and Mary's storyline as my second place. Good choice. <laughs> it 
could be my first place. Like, it's very neck-to-neck, -neck, that race, but I really loved Alice's whole storyline. I love Mary's whole storyline. When they converge, I love them even more. Um, but especially this season, I really liked the overall plot of them both losing the sister that they had in Kate and coming together because of that and because they need each other and because not each other, but they need that someone. And that someone happens to be each other because they've basically been through very similar things. They're like two sides of one coin. And yeah, that was my fucking favorite aspect of this season and possibly of the show. Like I said, it's very up there with my <laughs> topic. Um but but yeah bro i fucking love alice and mary and i just if there's two actresses in that show that made me cry like a baby like fucking yep 500 times it was the two of them so <laughs> putting them together was just a brilliant decision i love nicole and rachel's chemistry on screen i i think they bounce off of each other very well and and yeah, I love their their storyline and their development both together and as individuals throughout the show. And I won't get into it more because we'll talk about the characters later. So I'm, I'm going <laughs> to save myself and just I pass the mic to you, Fran. Okay, thank you. Uh, my second storyline is Anna's third. So Alice is Beth. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. Alice's search for identity um, I don't even mean like just the season one but throughout and uh, in season three we actually had a little bit of that um, struggle again with her not wanting to be evil again which I thought was amazing and they could have done even more with that honestly um, mm -hmm. because besides not getting a season four we should have gotten a longer season three and we've mentioned this over and over but I Again, yeah. we're very bitter, so we can't stop ourselves from constantly making these comments. I'm really sorry. I, I hope the the people listening kind of feel the same way, so they're not as annoyed uh, with us constantly being like, but this should have happened. But when it's supposed to be an appreciation episode, we know. But to be... <laughs> we appreciate everything. We appreciate what happened and what could have happened. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But, you know, to keep it on the positive side, her healing journey across every season was my second pick. Um, Rachel is insane. She is incredible. She played, like, literally two characters, but also the same character at the same time. Um, I love the whole Alice in the Wonderland lore and that whole aspect to it. Um, I love these little themes and motives uh, that you can include in storytelling and um, I love her as an antagonist but again we'll talk a little bit more about that coming up when we talk about each character individually but that's my second pick. Okay did we reach the time for the number one spot? Mm -hmm. I think we have. This is this is so hard I don't know if this is my first I yeah we're, we're just not gonna rate it they're all you know at the same Equally level important. for me. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to choose my kids. This is like choosing my kids, you know? <laughs> yeah, I I don't know if this one will be surprising. I bet you thought it was an Alice one and <laughs> that she's in third. But it's it's Mary becoming Poison Mary. Yes, it's just, that's it's similar. mine too! Oh my god, <laughs> yes! <laughs> You know, that whole storyline for me is included in my second point, but I'm glad say... you mentioned it in the first. <laughs> I was going to say it's close to what Ines said, but especially it's about Mary. I don't think it was the best storyline, objectively. It left a lot to desire. I wanted way more of it, like we discussed it. But what we got was so good. Like, I loved just seeing an iconic comic book character be in reinvented in Mary. It just gave our character such just a needed twist, as so many new sides to explore that Nicole just killed it. And I was just so excited every week. And I think people know because <laughs> we spent like half of our episodes with mo mostly the Mary centered ones, just raving about Mary and, <laughs> and Nicole. I just have a soft spot for when minor characters get their moments, as you know, and it was just the best. It's just an exciting journey for me. 
uh, to go through. And I think that's the thing I will remember the most about this season and also just about this show in general. And I wanted more. Yeah, my number one, I make Anna's words my own, honestly, uh, as Poison Mary as well. Uh, I wrote down including her relationship with Alice, so it's a little bit of uh, yeah. in his uh, second position. But um, honestly, even just from a superficial point of view, like Nicole was also that so hot <laughs> as Poison Mary, like the evilness and the <laughs> playfulness it was so exciting to watch. I don't know if it's number one for us because it's so fresh. But I went down and I read like the synopsis for all of season one and all of season two just to make sure I had stuff right. And I couldn't help but still play Spoiler Mary as my number one. And yeah, like everything Anna said, I don't have to repeat it. It was just hot. It was exciting. It was moving. <laughs> She made me cry like hell. And I fucking love Mary. And especially the last point that Anna made, minor characters getting their spotlight. You know, we will always be bitter that Sophie and Luke didn't get the chance, but at least Mary did, and yeah. they did a fantastic job with it, and it's my number one. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned her being hot, because I know you weren't innocent in picking that story nope. one for number one. Like, Not at come all. on. <laughs> I admit it. I know it. you way too well. <laughs> <laughs> I was going crazy in those episodes, man. Nicole you didn't were. have to do me like that. The thirst trap. <laughs> <sighs> It was too bad. Uh, <laughs> but I guess my my number one that's, you know, tied to number two is Ryan's coming into Batwoman. Yes. <laughs> um, like, like we mentioned before, I was here since season one, so I've been through the whole process of changing leads. And I think not just Javicia, but the writers also did so much with so little um and i think it was a beautiful journey to watch this quote-unquote nobody uh get into the suit and suddenly have not have all this power but suddenly be empowered to change things and to make things better and to actually have some capacity to do those things because you know even if ryan wanted to do something before it's not like she had the means to do it and i really like not just that whole thing but also right also and especially ryan getting to like understand that she deserves that spot she didn't you know she didn't just stumble into something because she did stumble into the suit and whatnot But she could have failed, and she didn't. She she took what was there, and she made it her own, and she she really un understood the city that she was in, and the people that she was trying to save and wanted to to fight for. And I really liked that moment. I think at the ending of season two, where we have um, the people in Gotham turning the cowl into these lanterns and showing their yeah. support for Batwoman. It's something that really stuck with me. And I think that that's kind of symbolic of what Javicia and Ryan as Batwoman have represented for a lot of people and for me, certainly. Um, she's, she's become this beacon of hope. And not to get too mushy, but she, she really made Batwoman this beacon of hope for me in terms of television. Because if Batwoman can exist, other shows like it can exist. Sure. And I think that in a lot of ways, um, not to bring it back to Candice Patton and The Flash, but I think like Candice paved the way for Javicia to be where she is right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, With being Iris and facing all that hatred that came with it. And that Javicia actually had to overcome as well. And I think Javicia is another stepping stone in that staircase to, you know, these fucking things not being a big deal anymore. Yeah, literally. Um, like, not being a big deal to white people, because I get it being a big deal to people of color who see themselves uh, represented in, this char in these characters, but, like, white people, why are you mad? I mean, the hate still wouldn't be justified that way, but it's not like they cast Javicia as Kate Kane, you know? They created a yeah. whole ass character. So, like, 
I'm sorry to every. I'm not, but I'm sorry to <laughs> everyone who's but hurt about not having Kate as Batwoman. But she hasn't been Batwoman for two seasons. Like, move the fuck on with your life. Yeah. Um, and it's been disheartening to see people celebrating Batwoman's uh, cancellation. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm I'm gonna get back on track. Uh, at the end of the day, I really loved Ryan's whole ass journey. Uh, I loved her with the bad team. I loved her on her own. I think she grew a lot as a character since we first met her at the beginning of season two. Uh, I think this season really was about solidifying Ryan as Batwoman, and I really appreciated that. Uh, I think, like you said, friend, the season was very short, and we could have had uh, a lot more of the other characters if it wasn't. But I also really appreciated having Ryan be the center because I feel like she changed a lot as as we moved along and I just I love to see her I love Javicia in this role and just yeah it's it's up there for me like I said I don't know if it's over or under uh the Alice and Mary storylines uh but it's still very important to me and I I really like what was done with it yeah agreed i think we all agree that a big part if not the biggest part of what makes this show so special are the characters right Fuck yes yeah. yeah you can just tell that they're written with such love and care they are not there to be stereotypes they are there to break expectations and make us feel you know real emotions and I think what's important about this show and what I really like about this show is that it really makes us be there for the journey. So we are always just rooting for the characters. Like Fran said today, simil similarly to what we would do with a real friend. So they really feel like they're our friends in real life. Absolutely. So because we love them so much, what I want to do now is shout out a character and we can talk a little bit about them. Maybe to make this kind of brief, because we already talked about it, we can just say one particular trait that we love about that character, what made us fall in love with them. And I think the first character that we can talk about, I tried to put them in order of appearance and then it just kind of got random. <laughs> so uh, the first person is Sophie. Okay, for me, the thing that I love most about Sophie, I think, is her kindness. Um, I think she's a very good friend, very loyal friend to mm -hmm. um, everyone uh, that she loves and she's got a very good heart, uh, even though life has dealt her some poor cards. But um, in the end, out of the entire Batwoman team, uh, I think Sophie would be the one that I would most want in my life. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that. I think the word I associate with Sophie the most and the thing about her that really stands out for me is her bravery, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think that, sh that Sophie showed us um, that it's okay to take up space and to, to have a voice. And, you know, you don't have to be on the same path as everyone else. You're on your own journey. Um, and, you know, I love her for that. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Not me getting emotional over that. <laughs> sniff, sniff. Uh, um, for me, I just wrote that Sophie is just so strong. I, I've always admired that about her. Uh, I love that she's not, you know, the typical superhero that is strong uh, physically, although she is. But emotionally, she's just so strong. She ho always holds her ground. She knows what she wants. And even if it makes me mad at her sometimes with her decisions, I, I just admire that so much. And like Fran said also that she just cares so much and is just there for, for everyone around her. And she would do anything to, to defend you if you were her mm -hmm. friend, I think. Absolutely. So kind, brave and strong, mm -hmm. I think. We Heck did a great yeah. job, girls. Good job. Megan would be proud. <laughs> okay, next up. 
it's Mary. Okay, I think what I love most about Mary is her uh, unwavering positivity, mm -hmm. which I think bothers a lot of people, and <laughs> often she has not been respected as much as she should have because she's so positive and happy all the time. Um, people don't really take her seriously, and I love how uh, the show made her like a literal doctor and one of the very best and uh, still gave her like an influencer storyline there for a little bit and she loves fashion um, she loves having insta followers and all of that she always has these amazing hairstyles but she's also very intelligent so um, yeah I think my favorite thing about her is how positive she mm -hmm. is but how that doesn't undermine mm -hmm. everything else I think my favorite thing about Mary is her compassion um, the same way you were talking about Sophie, I feel like Mary is very ride or die for her friends, to a fault. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but not just her friends, she just cares about people, and I see myself a lot in that. Um, I think she, she has a very good heart, and even in season one, one of my favorite Mary scenes, uh, and not plots, but like things that happened was her knowing that Kate was bad woman but not wanting to confront her about it because she wanted her to tell her on her own terms and I think that's just a small thing but but that speaks so much about who Mary is she's not going to force you into doing something you're not comfortable with mm -hmm. um and Literally. and you know she's just a great friend and she's not stupid like you said so I really appreciated her realizing that Kate was Batwoman without being told that Kate was Batwoman. Um, but, but yeah, I fucking love Mary. I love how sweet she is. I agree with you that she's a little precious ball of sunshine who's also at the same time dealing with so much trauma. Uh, but, yeah. but yeah, I really... What I love the most about her is definitely her compassion and how she loves the people around her. I don't want to extend too much, but I just feel like people who are really positive, then people are going to think, like, you're just being innocent yeah. and you don't know, like, just face up to the real world or whatever. But I feel like it's so brave to be positive when the world is so fucked up, fucked up around you and to make a point to see the good in people, to see For the sure. good in the situations, I think, is often really overlooked as a really, as something that takes a lot of work. Uh, like you mentioned, like, Mary was dealing with her own shit and st st still she was like hey but look at this look at it this way or something like that mm -hmm. so that's something that i love about her for sure i relate to that so much in my own personal life people because you're kind people just think you're innocent or that your feelings just are not ex existent sometimes and so i just see myself a lot in mary in that she she's just uh, she's just so strong, but in not a, a showy way, you know, she's she's more like in the storyline where no one was listening to her, but she kept being there for them and she kept um, helping Ryan with her missions and everything. And you know that any other character, character maybe would have been like, hey, you're not listening to me. And I just love that she's also just so complex that we got to see her multiple sides and it showed that she wasn't just that kind person. But what makes Mary her is, is her kindness and that's what distinguishes her from other characters. And I just love Mary And so without much. wanting to, to like take too much on this, um, I really like that you mentioned her you know, having to put her foot down with the bad team. Because I think, first of all, uh, I think that what Fran said about being happy in such a negative wor world takes courage. So Mary, in her own way, is fighting and is very brave in, what she, in how she sees things, in my opinion. Uh, but then with the bad team, I also feel like being that type of person usually kind of makes people take advantage of you even if they're yeah, not so noticing I mean, it yeah. exactly even if they don't notice and don't do it with malice with which i don't think the bad team like neglected her out of you know bad faith mm -hmm. stuff you know i think they genuinely didn't understand that mary was going through shit and that they weren't really there for her and i'm really glad that we saw that development in, in her and that she never 
I mean, she did stop being married for a second there when she turned into Poison Ivy Hill, but um, I really liked that after that, Mary still reverted to being her kind self and yeah. being worried about people and about her actions and about what that meant for others. And she's a lot more than what she can do for others. Like, Mary is a lot more than someone who services other people and I mm -hmm. think the show did a good enough job with displaying that and I really love her for it but what's your word Anna kindness mm -hmm. yeah I, I agree yeah. okay so uh positive compassionate and kind yes. <laughs> absolutely okay next up I've talked a lot about her but it's Alice so I'll let you go first okay what is the thing that I love most about Alice um that's this is the hardest one I would yeah. say I think I love how evil she is <laughs> straight nice. up nice um sh I would say in, instead of evil just fun yeah. she's just really f a really fun character she brought so much uh soul and heart to the show like in terms of making it distinct and making it really entertaining and very very captivating like she just has so much character um she's just very magnetic and really lures you in uh with all sides when she's being vulnerable when she's being really evil and creepy um when she's being hilarious in the side just making little comments about everything so i would my word would be magnetic and charismatic nice mm -hmm. nice words <laughs> <laughs> uh mine would be resilient oh good one mm, yeah i i really love one thing that i love about alice um is really how she not how because she obviously didn't deal with the stuff that happened to her the best way if she ended up being alice uh but i really like how she dealt with it good or bad she just kept going and I think that takes a lot on a person and I think there's a lot to learn with Alice um, and her wanting to be better because Alice has been resilient until the end. Yeah. Even against, Absolutely. not just against outside factors, but against herself, I feel like. And, you know, we know that season four wouldn't have been a great season for Alice. Let's, Thank not, you. let's not talk about <laughs> it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel, for spoiling that. Um, but I really think that she, she's been fighting since the beginning almost. And, you know, it just it was good for me to see that fight in her. And... I think we can all learn with Alice that everyone is worthy of being fought for mm -hmm. and having support and you never really know what someone is going through um, and what they want to do. And sometimes people just need for you to keep fighting for them in order for them to want to fight for themselves. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, resilience for sure. Nice. I think my word for Alice is complex, which I think sums up what you all said. It's my mm -hmm. favorite thing uh, to watch her. Just never, I never really know what Alice is going to do. And I love that. She's, she's just, she has these multiple, yes. she has these multiple um, sides to her. And I think it makes her fun. It makes her chaotic and I think it's funny that Mary came before because I think it sums up my two favorite types of characters, which is the wholesome character and the fun chaotic character. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just love both of those uh, archetypes. But yeah, I think fun and complex. It's I think they both describe really what it's like to to watch her and Rachel just just brings all of that to life so well so i'm never bored watching alice and go through uh, all her storylines absolutely mm -hmm. so, so charismatic resilient and complex perfect yes. we're doing such a great job <laughs> i'm proud of us i'm proud of us right now yeah we're doing we're really working hard okay next it's our bad woman ryan 
Okay, my word is inspiring, I think. Um, I think she's a perfect hero character. Um, she is very correct and fearless. And she had she adds this vulnerability layer to it. Like she's not afraid to try and connect emotionally with the people that she's trying to help. She never really puts on that kind of front of nothing is hurting me. Um, I think that's more much more of a Mary or Sophie um, trait. Even though Ryan has had kind of put, even though Ryan did put walls um, up so as not to get hurt, she's mm-hmm. she was also never. Uh, scared to show a vulnerable side. Um, that's what I loved so much about her as Batwoman. So, yes, my word would be inspiring. I think mine would be courageous. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it takes balls to do what Ryan has done. And she's never shied away from from her problems. I mean, with Sophie she did, but... Mm-hmm. Um, she she has this tendency to look at the bigger problem first and we saw that in this season and she's just not fucking afraid of tackling on things that would make anyone shiver and think twice and i think like you said she's the perfect hero in the sense that she's not perfect by any means but she's perfect in being a hero and exactly. being that mm-hmm hero archetype that we're used to seeing and in being vulnerable it takes courage to that to do that and she did it this season and it was probably the most courageous thing she did in the whole show uh in in opening herself up um and yeah i just think she's brave and courageous yeah um i i don't know what words i would use to describe ryan but my favorite thing about her is that she sticks to her values, kind of similar to Sophie, because it's also one of the things that annoys me when I don't agree with Ryan. But I just appreciate that that so much. The consistency. (laughs) Yeah, she she just knows what she wants. She she knows what she she wants to defend. She knows who her enemies are, who her friends are. Uh, I don't know what word would sum that up. Strong-willed, maybe? Strong-willed, yeah, that's a good word. Because I, I just appreciate that so much because really that's, that's what a hero has to be. Um, yeah. They can change their mind, but they have to have really set values and be willing to fight everything for that and to achieve that. So I think um, strong-willed, kind of a visionary as well. She, she just wants to make, she knows what Gotham could be and she fights for it. And yeah, I really appreciate that about Ryan. Okay, so inspiring, courageous, and strong-willed. Yes. Amazing. We're four out of five, guys. We're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, our boy Luke. Okay, my word for Luke would be dedicated. Um, mm-hmm. I think he... Uh, when he puts his mind to something, he's going to see it through. Uh, he's very thorough in everything that he does. He's a great professional, uh, if we want to uh, keep it a little colder and not get as emotional. But he was a great addition to the bat team. Everyone would want him on their team because he's just very intelligent, obviously. But he's also very meticulous and detail-oriented. Uh, and that's something that I loved um, watching him on the show. It was also, it was always very exciting to see that part of him. So yeah, my word would be meticulous or dedicated. This is kind of a weird word to describe a person, but I think of Luke as like the monitor of the group, like the group (laughs) keeping it together, you know? Absolutely. There's... I love that. (laughs) (laughs) There's like... I don't think there's a single word to to describe him, but I'll just say cheerleader, even though he's not very cheery. <laughs> I uh, wasn't expecting that. And I just picture, picture Luke as a cheerleader with the pom-poms. <laughs> um, even though he's not very cheery, as per se, I think he's always been very proactive in keeping Batwoman safe and keeping the mission going. Um, yeah. 
And I think a lot of those missions would have failed without Luke. I mean, we saw how they fared in that one episode where Luke was off with Deagle. And it wasn't it wasn't great. They made do, but it wasn't the same. So, <laughs> um, But I feel like he's a bridge between characters, like in season one yeah. specifically, with Kate and Mary. And he was kind of in the middle of it. Um, kind of like connective tissue there. Uh, I just... I really like how he, despite having some reservations about some people, is always kind of willing to work with everyone and make the best out of the situations they're in. And he's a, I, I guess problem solver will would be my, mm-hmm. my, my word. It's not a word, it's two words, but whatever. Problem solver um, is what I would say of Luke he's always there whether the problem is something technical or whether the problem is something with the bad team he's always there he never leaves people to their own devices and to dealing with shit on their own so I appreciate him for that I think my word relates what you just said Uh, I chose loyal because Mm. that's a thing I always associate with Luke I'm mostly remembering when um, Ryan first came into the picture. Mm -hmm. Luke was so adamant that Kate was still alive and that he didn't want to let Ryan take over. He's like, no, Kate is going to come back and you can't do this. And I think that just shows he's the most loyal person. And I think what you're saying, that he's kind of like a bridge to other characters, kind of also shows that because he's always a person that is there for others and I don't want to characterize Luke just by him in 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 spite of other people or Mm -hmm. in service of other people but because we didn't have his own storyline very developed like we said I think that's the thing that's um is more relevant to me from what I've watched Luke do and I really admire that Mm mm-hmm Yeah, exactly. I feel like just what we're saying really shows that Luke was the most underdeveloped character in Batwoman, but also had a a lot of potential. So that that will always make us bitter. But then Mm -hmm. your words were meticulous, problem solver, and loyal, which which are still really good. Yeah, I really admire that in, in other people, you know, it's not some... I'm not dismissing Luke, but... I think some of the other words we use for the other characters are more individual, are more self-centered, and we don't have that with Luke because they didn't develop. Like you're saying, I think if we had Batwing, I would have other words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have uh, another category because there's a lot more characters than these five ones, so I just wanted to group them in a special guests category. And what I was going to ask you is just to shout out like how many ones that really stood out, like the the special guests, the ones that stood with you the most. Julia, first and foremost. I fucking nice. love her. I miss Christina. I miss her dynamic with the cast. I miss her with, so- not with Sophie, not the relationship because yeah, I'm very yeah, yeah. much a Wildmore stan, but... Uh, I miss that dynamic with Sophie. I miss her dynamic with Alice as well. I think we should Mm -hmm. have gotten more of her and Luke because she was very much connected with Luke and Luke's past and Lucia's and whatnot. So I think it would have been a good opportunity to like dig out more of Luke. Um, And yeah, I really, I really love that character. I, (laughs) she was kind of corny in the sense that they kept (laughs) giving her those very British stereotypical lines. Oh yeah. yeah. (laughs) But still, I loved her and I miss her. I'm sad we won't get to see her again. Uh, I would also love to see Stephanie Brown come back eventually. Oh yeah. I love I was, Stephanie in that one. I episode. was surprised you guys hadn't mentioned it. Hadn't mentioned her. I yet. can't believe I almost forgot her, honestly, I because forgot. I love her so much. <laughs> but but yeah, and I would also like to see Sophie's mom again, if anything, for the drama. Okay, I hate to play devil's advocate here, but before I get into special guests, I'd like to have a quick shout out to Kate Kane. You know. <laughs> <laughs> sorry Regardless. i didn't include kate i didn't want to be controversial you know <laughs> i know i understand i can do that for you and take the all the fire uh but yeah regardless of whatever has happened off screen if we consider just who kate was on screen she rapidly became a favorite character of mine 
Um, I know you guys don't share that opinion as much, thanks to how she acted towards Alice and Mary, and I get it, totally. Um, but I still think she, that she was a, a worthy protagonist that first season, and I really enjoyed her as the very first out and proud lesbian superhero that I'd ever seen to that magnitude. Um, you know, Ryan came after, of course, and took the show f much farther away. Uh, but first impact is always important and always leaves a mark. And that first impact for me was Kate. Um, and she still, you know, she's still, Bat she's still a part of Batwoman for me. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know. I know in general people don't like talking about her uh, because of all the controversy. But this is a Batwoman appreciation episode. And I think it would be a little unfair to not mention her um, as an important character on the show. Um, but as for side characters, for me, I would say Jordan and Pam. I love Heck them. Yeah. Yes. Jordan, most of all. Um, and before we continue, I just have to say that I agree with you that Kate was very much a part of the show in season one, and that's undeniable. Uh, and I think we can appreciate both having, you know, Ryan and Kate. Uh, there was a time and place for everything. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed Kate while we got her. So I think it would be unfair of me to say I didn't. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I enjoyed Kate while we had her, even though I had my problems with the character, but she was very headstrong, very set in her ways, very much a woman on a mission. And, you know, there's value to that. And she did represent a part of the queer community that not often gets... Um, that highlight the being out and proud and very sure about yourself so i do think that there was value to her uh but with that being said i do agree with you that i'd love to see jordan again <laughs> yes jordan no i think what i said about ryan applies to kate in the sense that they both have the the characteristics that you need to have to be a superhero um, they put the city first, they're, they're very headstrong, both of them, they know what they believe. So yes, I do, I can see why Kate was so important and in season one I liked Kate. Uh, I just didn't mention, you know, not just with the controversy with, um, with Ruby Rose, but because Ryan became Batwoman for me, so he kind of Absolutely. overshadowed, you know, uh, Kate's character. Yeah, I think sense. of when I think of Batwoman, I think of Ryan, and Kate is just Kane. Kate, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and exactly, yeah. and Kate is Kate without the suit, without anything. Like I think yeah, of yeah. Ruby Rose when I think of Kate Kane, and when I think of the suit, and I think of the the signal in Batwoman, it's Ryan that comes to mind. Period. But I, I'm surprised you didn't mention your girl, Dana. Oh, please. <laughs> You're I setting me you. up. You're setting me up. <laughs> Dana, I love you. I will always fight for you, girl. <laughs> um, I think for me, I have to say the people closest to Alice, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mouse and Ocean are super important to Ocean. her character. Yeah, both of them. Like Mouse uh, was so important to her at the time, and when she she killed him, you know that that was a big change for her. And in in that episode with um, when Alice sees them both, I was super emotional because they they had such a huge impact in her storyline. And yeah, they're. I'm always gonna think about them because they they were they really developed our storyline as well. I had Ocean written down, but I wrote it like, but mostly for shallow reasons because he was dropped dead He's gorgeous. Hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of thirsting happening in this podcast today. Honestly, I apologize. That's, that's why I ship them the most. <laughs> so true. They're such a good-looking couple. Yeah. Now, because it's a superhero show, we could not forget the villains. Honestly, they're half of the fun. Um, are there any that you'd like to highlight from these past seasons? Uh, as far as villains go, I think my favorites and the people I kind of miss are Magpie, just because we saw her a couple times, um, 
and I got attached. Uh, <laughs> Victor Zaz, for sure, one of my favorite recurring villains. Marquis, obviously. Clue Master, I also, I fucking love that episode. And I'm not going to say Professor Pig because I, I hate that guy. Uh, but <laughs> I love the episode, but I hate him. Um, and Enigma also, I loved her. And Ooh, I wish yeah. we would have seen more of that. And Sophia. Okay, now now you can go, Fran. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, mentioned, you basically mentioned them all, but... Um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, sorry. I totally agree, though. This show had amazing villains, for real. Um, even the ones that were gone quickly, I thought were really, really entertaining. I also loved the Batman Gallery of Rogues storyline. Um, but my top picks would be Marquise and mm -hmm. Pam and Sophia. Yeah. Hell These yeah. are my top three. Yeah, all the ladies for me. Uh, Poison Ivy <laughs> <laughs> Poison Ivy and Sophia, I think, are two of my favorites. I also just need to mention Kiki because I love the actress and I wasn't expecting <laughs> at all. She was fun. Right, we have reached a very important and wholesome part of the episode. I know we have so much more to talk about because really we could be here all day just expressing how much we love this show. But in an attempt to try to sum things up, we have asked some people in the fandom the question, what does Batwoman mean to me? Thank you very much to everyone who participated. We will be reading your lovely messages in just a bit. But before that, I want you to go first, Fran and Ines. What does Batwoman mean to you? Uh, I think Batwoman means friendship to me, honestly. Uh, when I look back, what I'm going to remember is the podcast and getting to yeah. really dive into this show with you girls. And it's been challenging. God knows there has been some drama here and there. But we really made so many episodes. We dedicated so much of our time to this. And Batwoman became such a huge part of our lives because of that. So when I'll think Batwoman in years to come, I'm going to think Anna and Inish. Oh, I fucking hate you for being so mushy at this time of day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't... I don't want to take too long because I feel like uh, in the fan messages we'll get a lot into what Batwoman also means to us through other people. Yeah. But I hate to agree with Fran, but it means a lot to me in friendship-wise mm -hmm. because I feel like it first of all opened the door for us um, to, you know, become closer again. And I really appreciate that and... I appreciate it even more now that we spend all this time together and, you know, stuff. But I'm not going to get mushy. I refuse. <laughs> um, but what Batwoman, the show and the character mean to me really is hope. Hope that, you know, things are getting better in terms of representation on television. Maybe not in terms of the reception of it, but, you know, efforts are being made and... Uh, even the cast itself gives me hope because we have all these lovely people who have always cared so much about the fandom and, you know, just, just having Javicia, a black woman, a black queer woman as the lead of a show, it shows that a lot is possible and there's a lot yet to accomplish, but there's a lot that also has been accomplished so far. Um, and as a queer woman myself, um... I feel very, very inspired, very empowered, very hopeful because of that. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> uh, for me, it's pretty much the same of what you guys said. The first thing I, I had here was the, that Bad Woman means this passion project and something we've wanted to do uh, for a long time and... Like Fra said already in, in this episode, it was like uh, what Glee was like for us because we kind of didn't have many shows in common and this is the one show that I got the same energy that we had, just fun girling over it, that we had all those years ago. So it's very nostalgic, I think, for me and really special for that. As for Batwoman itself, 
besides the representation, which is obvious, and it's a show that should exist on television, personally, I love a show that just cares so much about its characters and the writers care so much about the show, you can see it, and about the fandom. And I've been telling you guys this week that I don't have a lot of shows that I watch because I'm just so excited to watch them and I love it so much. Mm -hmm. I just watch shows because to pass time, let's say, I've been finding it really hard to find a show that I'm so passionate about as I am with Bad Woman. And I think that's just, that's a personal taste, but also it's because it's done with so much love and it's hard to find shows made with so much love mm -hmm. like bad woman is yeah I was, sense... i was gonna say that i agree with you in that i think that there are a lot of shows that are very clearly made for commercial purposes these yep. days and Batwoman never felt like that to me at least yeah in a sense Batwoman is very much an old-fashioned show just because it feels like those shows that used to have a lot of seasons that cared a lot about their fan base and growing a fan base and that knew that the fan base would carry the show. Um, whereas nowadays, shows just feel very chewed, like they're half-assed and put out to uh, get a quick response, but then not really thought through in uh, seasons two and three. Uh, and then eventually get a cancellation that no one really cares about. And there's there, then there's another show that has a strong season, season one for a uh, good reception, but doesn't really care about the characters or the story that it's trying to tell. It's just trying to get good numbers uh, with Batwoman. It felt like the shows that we used to have growing up, you know, that were about the stories that people were trying to tell. And it, they were about like, let's try to tell the best stories that we possibly can so that we get these fans really, really hooked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, if we don't get a season four, I'm I'm happy that this show ended in a high note, you know? So many shows just make more season to make more money and then at the end you're like, please just cancel it, I can't take it anymore. So at uh -huh. least if, if this is the end, I'm gonna leave with in a high note and Good memories. remember it as a great show that didn't go bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I have to also mention that in the vein of what you were saying, Fran, shows nowadays, especially shows that like come out all at once, feel very, how do I put this? Like they only be belong in that space and time, you know? Like people talk about them for a week and it's over. Yeah. yeah. Um, and with Batwoman, with it airing every week, I was always excited to see people's reactions and um fan commentary and what people thought was going to happen next you know it felt like a whole experience and something that we don't get a lot nowadays um even though fandom certainly continues to exist you know like that's never dying down but it felt like an experience and not just something that was stuck in that moment in that time um and i guess that's also why we are seeing such concentrated efforts towards getting a fourth season and why those efforts keep going like a couple weeks after the show has been cancelled because Batwoman does mean a lot to a lot of people and it really cultivated that that good side to fandom and because of that it has a lot of people fighting for it and a lot of people that aren't just willing to fight for it on the day of cancellation but people who know that this is a fight that takes a long time and They're dedicated. Yeah, they are dedicated fans. Uh, and, you know, I really appreciate that sense of community that yeah. Batwoman brought about again. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, now I think it's time to read out some messages that we got in all our social media. So this is from lovely people in the fandom who also answered the question what Batwoman means to them. Okay, from Gracie. What can I say? Batwoman has literally saved my life. It has represented my culture and how to let yourself feel. Batwoman is the embodiment of hope. This show is a representation of everyone. I pray that our show gets saved and that we get to see where our ships and characters go. I want to thank the whole Batfam for playing such a big part in getting the show saved. I hope that it will be. Thank you and love y'all. Thank you, Gracie. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's so cute. From Linda, we got this message. It's short, sweet, and straight to the point. Um, thanks for this show. Visibility matters. The nation needs to see this. Uh, you know, Linda, I'll just say this. Not just the nation, but the world. You know? <laughs> let's, yeah. not, let's not limit ourselves. Shout out to international Batwoman fans, aka us. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> And I think it just sums up what we are saying. This is a show that needs to be on television. It's not just personal taste. Like, it belongs in television. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. From lovely Jess, uh, Jess and Lloyd. Batwoman means to me a chance to feel seen, especially as a black queer woman. Usually I have to pick to be seen as black queer. Batwoman gives me the option to be both at the same time. Thanks to Ryan Wilder and Sophie Moore as individual women, I've literally never felt so seen. They're both badasses, unapologetically, black and proud to be out and lesbians who just want a family and to be loved. And they can kick ass if you test them. <laughs> yes. Which is so fun. <laughs> yeah. You're so right, Jess. From Lily at Lily9945906. Hello, my name is Lily. I am Cuban, but I live in Gran Canaria, Spain for four years. Shout out international Batwoman fans. Yes, Spain. <laughs> <laughs> what does Batwoman mean to me? Easy. Batwoman means a lot to me. It changed my life in an unexpected way. At 28 years of age, I never considered speaking freely and without fear of rejection about my true sexual taste. And it was not until Batwoman arrived with Javisha Leslie at the helm that I experienced the feeling the need to express it. Even when I entered this incredible fandom, I published a letter in defense of the program, saying that I was not lesbian, nor bisexual, nor black, but I love the program because of the great representation that it has in all these fields, so attacked by society. At that time, I was a novice and still insecure, and I lied. Today, I proudly admit that I am happily bisexual. Oh, this is so nice to read. And I'm Bat getting Woman. emotional I know, hearing same. this. <laughs> Aw. In Batwoman, the courage of Sophie Moore coming out of the closet, Megan Tandy, and each interview with Javisha helped me to love myself as I am and not be afraid to express myself and have the luck to love women as much as men. This is with respect to my sexuality. On the other hand, Batwoman, Ryan Wilder, also instilled in me values of self-improvement, self courage and confidence no matter how difficult my childhood has been. It does not mean that I should give up and pretend that good things do not exist for me or not for a long time. And I think it is something mental, because as I said in my presentation, I am Cuban and I have lived in Spain for four years. It has not been easy at all. I left 23 years of my life behind, my family, friends, and here I am, happy and fighting to achieve every dream and goal that I set for myself. And it wasn't until Batwoman that I realized how lucky I am. I definitely need this show back in my life because I feel like it is more to teach me and millions of people around the world. So I part with this. Hashtag save Batwoman. Hashtag HBO Max save Batwoman. That was lovely. Oh, yes. Thank you so much, Lily. Thank you for sharing, Lily. That was incredible. And we love you. We wish you the best, honestly. That Absolutely. was lovely to hear. Yeah, I wish you the best in your endeavors. And, you know, what you had to do was very hard. And I'm happy that you found an escape in this show. Uh, from at Finney 896 I think that as the show evolved it changed my perception of why I was watching the show the inherent queerness was obviously a draw for many people pride is connected to our history and so the first season definitely represented that aspect of our culture and as the episodes progressed so did the message Kate struggling with the consequences of being openly gay versus Sophie struggling with staying in the closet struck a core in me, as the benefits of both is what some of us desire, yet the consequences of both options suffocate many. Freedom versus anonymity. Have courage is the clear and confident message that resonates. While not canonically queer, Alice exudes, uh, wait, while not canonically queer, sad face, Alice exudes <laughs> so queerness. True. Period. <laughs> Alice exudes queerness in a menacing yet playful way. I mean, who doesn't love a confident bad villain? Her outfits, her casual flirtations with anyone and everyone, her chaotic nature could rival our drag queen sisters. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> this message is giving me life. <laughs> 
Rachel Scarston's impactful performances each season have left me, in some cases, a sobbing mess as well as hysterically laughing. You'll never know which one will hit. That's a good mood. <laughs> Season 2 undertakes the hard job of introducing us to a new Batwoman. Ryan Wilder has some similar aspects to Kate, making her a candidate for the mantle. But she shines as a person of the people. Her backstory, not just the traumatic moments, push her to be confident and an advocate for justice that's different from her predecessor. Javicia and the writers portray Ryan as a woman struggling to follow the words of her mother, who wanted her to be kind, caring and forgiving when the city of Gotham hurls trials of strength at her for her to overcome at every moment. By the end of the second season, she has proven herself as the next bat to save Gotham. She speaks to everyone hardened by the burdens of life, terrified of showing her soft side after being burned so many times. Her found family lessens that burden. The bat symbol proves to give hope to the citizens of Gotham, but the bat woman herself. Her bravery to accept some of those flaws is something we all should strive towards. The importance of a stable community is emphasized and shall never be taken for granted by me. What made season 3 of Batwoman so, so special to me was that it pushed its characters to be emotional, emotionally vulnerable. Family, friends, loved ones challenged the confidence and the facade of being okay this season. It's a campy and absurd show, but at the core, the characters are pushed to deal with the complex situations. There's something so valuable to learn from seeing different experiences. Starting from season 2, black culture is embedded into the show and thrives in voicing these experiences. I'm not black and I feel like I cannot fully appreciate what the writers have given us, but it's hard not to see the heartwarming response to the show. Batwoman deserves to continue, if not for its continuation of the Bat mythos, then for the fans who desperately desire to see a continuation of these love characters. Yes. Uh, now this message is from Wildermore. Batwoman means everything to me and the wider audience. Batwoman, as a black and openly gay superhero, means everything. Being able to see myself on my screen, being able to relate so deeply to some of the issues that come up, being able to relate to a character that hits so close to home meant everything to me. In a time where both communities struggle for good representation, Batwoman felt like the start of a great answer to the lacking that we see in representation. And even though the cancellation, I do still think the show is a blueprint going forward. And then, just to put the cherry on top, we had two black lesbians in a relationship. I don't think we'll ever be able to connect and relate to another show like this for a while. So to just say Batwoman meant a lot would be a true understatement. It meant and still means the world. Aww. Yes! That was so sweet. <laughs> okay, from rainy underscore days w u. What does Batwoman mean to me? I am rainy underscore days w on Twitter, but you can call me Thais. It is a pleasure to answer this question asked by the Arkham Archives Batwoman podcast. Thank you, Thais. To understand the full length of my story with this formidable show, I believe we should go back to when I was just a little girl. I was introduced to the comic book world as soon as I could read properly by going to the library often with my family. It didn't shock me at the time that most of the superheroes displayed were white men. I thought, Oh well, I will simply choose the coolest one and go on with my life. <laughs> Best believe that I became a huge die-hard Batman fan, lol, until Batwoman portrayed by Javisha Leslie came along. What changed? Everything. So true. Batwoman being <laughs> Batwoman being portrayed by a black woman for the first time was revolutionary. I felt like the little kid in the library discovering this marvelous world all over again. But this time, I got to have my own superhero, one that I know looks like me, one that I know will not stop looking for me if I am lost, will understand me because she's just like me, but most importantly, one that inspires me to be strong, to do good, and to have hope. The Batwoman writers did such a great job showing us that they understood that such representation was slash is important. Ryan's story with the candy lady says it all. Not only is Ryan an amazing superhero for little me, Aw, she is also a superhero for the me that exists Aww. today. As Shut a black up, I'm queer getting misty eyes. <laughs> I'm getting too. emotional stuff. Uh, you guys are great, are great writers, by the way. Um, yeah, you are. As a black queer woman, for the first time in my entire life, I felt seen, understood, better yet welcomed somewhere. 
they always talk about LGBTQIA representation on TV, and I have seen it grow tremendously these past decades, but never before has a representation felt like Batwoman to me. Not only is she portrayed by the most beautiful soul on earth, heart emoji, Javisha Leslie, heart emoji, but her <laughs> character, <laughs> who is depth, uh, an admirable purpose, who is strong, resilient, good, falls in love with another beautiful, amazing, and brave black woman. Again, the Batwoman writers worked their magic into putting together this love story that has changed not one, but so many people's lives. For the first time, two black women were falling in love in the most beautiful way on my screen. Yes, it is okay to be a queer black woman and fall madly in love with another queer black woman. We exist, we are here, and we deserve to be represented like all the other forms of couples out there. Wild Moore was finally doing it right, and I am not ready to let it go. I am not ready to let this show go. So I will stay fighting for as long as it takes until we get them back. For all the little girls that will go to the libraries and find comics of Ryan Wilder, I am fighting for them too today. Like Shavisha I'm gonna said, cry. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like Shavisha said, we did it already, but we deserve more, and we shall get it. Oh that was God. so beautiful, Thais. Thank you so much. Thank you. That really was beautiful, and I just have to say that um, we don't have the added layer of being black in this podcast. Uh, I I am mixed, so uh, my my mother is from Angola in Africa, uh, and part of my family is black, but I still cannot connect in the way that a lot of people absolutely do connect with Batwoman, and I really enjoy seeing that that love and that feeling of representation that people are getting with this show that they weren't able to get before because like like a lot of people put usually you have to choose one or the other either you get a black character or you get a queer character mm -hmm. to identify with and batwoman has provided a lot of people with both in one and not in one in two actually because also sophie um and renee if we come to think about it but you know, just just wanted to put it out there that you guys do deserve this. And actually the world deserves this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, from Nichelle, Batwoman centering a queer black woman's story and triumph, as well as a queer black love story, has forever changed the way I view the media I consume. I'm just very thankful and in need of so much more of it. Big same. Exactly. From Fandom Explorer, Having the representation of two black lesbian characters as the main couple is monumental and it felt so good to be seen and I wish we could have gotten much more. You Thank hear you. that HBO Max? Yeah. Period. Get with the program. They better listen to this episode. I'm not joking. We should <laughs> spam their mentions and be like, hey, so this is a compilation of what you're taking away from us. Yeah. So true. Okay, so from Mary on Instagram... Batwoman gives representation of the black and LGBTQ plus community. It shows me how you can be black, queer, and super at the same time, and being all that makes you powerful. Thank you, Mary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very true. From Libby X Quinn, or Libby on Twitter, there are a lot of reasons why Batwoman is important to me. This show didn't just build a fandom, it built a family. I want to thank them for changing my life in numerous ways. Thank them for making me smile and laugh when I was at my lowest. Thank them for representing me and the fandom. Thank them for the best three years of my life. Even though the show has come to an end, just know that this fandom will never die. We're a family and that's what Aww. really matters. It's been a great ride and a great experience. And I'm glad that I was here to experience this. Aww, that's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. From Amanda at Amanda Line. So, to answer your question, which I think about often, even more so since the cancellation. For starters, Batwoman is so much more than just a show. This beautifully written collection of stories that intertwine together has had a greater impact on me than I thought possible of a show on TV. The characters have each overcome tragedy as individuals and watching their paths cross and friendships and relationships develop as they overcome tragedies and obstacles together was incredible to watch. We've seen Luke become the hero he's always wanted to be. We watched Mary realize that she's a vital part of the bad team and makes a difference without powers. 
We saw Alice break, break through her childhood trauma to provide assistance and support to Mary and the team at some points. We saw Ryan, a foster kid with a record, overcome every obstacle to become the city's hero and the bad team's leader. We've seen Sophie finally start to be comfortable in her own skin and finally be a part of the team that appreciates her skills and loyalty. But in this show, it's not just about the characters and their stories. It's also about the actors who have taken on these roles and have accepted the responsibilities that come with their portrayals. Very true. Mm -hmm. Each member of the Bat family has their story and their trauma, but they also have their triumphs. I love a character that comes up from a hardship. Who doesn't? Their complexity and layers are carefully depicted by Javicia, Megan, Cameron, Nicole and Rachel, who does an amazing job showing that Alice has chosen to come over to the good side. Little boys and little girls need to feel represented. Not all heroes are white, not all heroes are male. As someone who works closely with children that come from the foster care and have experienced loss and who have struggled with staying out of trouble, these characters are significant to providing them with role models they can relate to. Role models that they can see themselves in. It's important. It matters. They need to see themselves in the heroes that are being portrayed on TV. They need to see Ryan Wilder come up from being seen as a criminal and having no one to become the city's superhero. They need to see Luke Fox struggle with loss and self-confidence to become Batwing. They need to see Sophie Moore struggle with her sexuality and judgment and her, her battle how to make a difference to being the badass that she is and becoming the commissioner and slash or catwoman. Yes. <laughs> Period. They need to see Mary Hamilton struggling to see her own worth and loss to being the team doctor, saving lives and showing that not all heroes wear capes And everyday heroes are just as important. Yes. This is... You don't have to have superpowers to be super. I think this, this message is just summing up all we said in our characters thing. Like It's true. Each of them is so important in their own way. And I just love it so much. Uh, they need to see Alice making the, sh the choice to be good. Even after all the pain and suffering she's been through. And putting in the work to get to that point. The actors have given me so much love for the characters. The attention and care that Javicia and Megan brought to the Wildmore story is also something so inspiring. These two women have opened the door for queer women and queer women of color. Their representation matters. It is so rare that we see two queer women in a healthy and stable relationship on screen, but the writers and the cast have done just that. They developed Ryan and Sophie's story so gradually that it was the most natural transition from enemies to learning to trust one another, to friends, to lovers, to were officially a thing, and it was beautiful to watch. I have now an impossible standard for relationships, both on screen and in real life, period. <laughs> At I least to complain. my hopeless romance. <laughs> <laughs> you really can't. I know. At least to my hopeless romantic lesbian heart, Wildmore is the standard for queer rumor relationships on TV or even in movies. I have never felt so strongly about a f fictional relationship, but this one is just too important and too inspirational to look past. I firmly believe that their story is meant to be continued, even after this cancellation news. The world deserves to see healthy communication and undying love from the gold standard relationship of these two queer women of color. Yeah, so true. So true. Not only has the show influenced me and my life, but the fandom has as well. Joining my first fandom and becoming part of the Bat Fam has changed me and has allowed me to build friendship with strangers who have accepted me into their space to share ideas and encourage my creativity and have provided me with a sense of community that I didn't realize I was missing. Batwoman is more than just a story, it's more than just a show. It's been a life-changing, awe-inspiring experience, and I just hope that we are able to see it continue. That was amazing! Oh, yeah. That oh was gosh. so well written, like she really said everything and put it in such a good way when she was like saying what the characters could still be in a fourth season how, and how much we need to see that happen. Mm -hmm. and how important it is that was amazing Amanda thank you so much thank you Amanda thank and also you. 
we relate so much to the fandom experience because we started being friends from a fandom so uh, that that part also hit home <laughs> really hard yeah. yeah and it's been 10 years since so exactly. it's not like we were we became friends over fandom now uh, so just know that you might have made some friendships for life over yeah. there um, and I'm really happy that Batwoman was your first fandom I think it was a great place to start off it's a good absolutely <laughs> And it will not give you trauma for life like Glee did with us. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Very At least true. you didn't get brain rot from all of that. <laughs> okay, so last but not least, from Katrina at Katrina M. Fowler. I have to start by saying I'm already an Arrowverse fan. I watch it all. And I've historically watched a lot of the CW's content, generally speaking. That said, I was excited about a live-action Batwoman from the mention of her showing up in the Elseworlds crossover. At that point, it was encouraging to have another woman-led superhero show and to know that she would also be queer and be played by a queer person. When I learned that Megan Tandy was going to be casted as Sophie Moore, I was even more interested in the show because I'd been a fan of hers for some time. Actually, fun fact. Yeah, (laughs) Inez used Megan to lure me into watching Batwoman. She was like, remember that really hot girl on uh, Teen Wolf that you loved? Well, she's in Batwoman. (laughs) Brayden supremacists always. Yeah, Brayden, that was her name. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Um, And for the most part, season one of Batwoman proved to be entertaining enough that I was glad to have it in the lineup. I appreciated that it was a relevant show that didn't avoid touching on real-life topics, even while existing in an imagined world. Like many of my fandom friends, everything changed for me when I learned Javisha Leslie was casted as Batwoman for season two. I wish I could claim to have been following her work prior to her landing the role of Ryan Wilder, but I'm so grateful to the show for bringing her further into the spotlight. One click of research led to two clicks, and then the rabbit hole of learning about this fascinating actress who seemed destined for greatness was wide open for me to travel down. By the time season two of Batwoman aired, I was already a fan. And by the time I by the time it ended, I was deep in my I'm going to watch this repeatedly zone. Ryan Wilder was absolutely everything. I didn't know I had been living without in these superhero shows. More, the shift in storylines to write for a black actress as a lead made me feel seen in ways I didn't know I needed. I do also have to mention that I'm one of those crazy Wildmore fans who shipped them since Love the Hair Self. (laughs) (laughs) Taste. (laughs) I was never sold on Kate and Sophie. Kate was just a convenient vehicle for Sophie to come out for me. I actually enjoyed Sophie with Julia much more. That said... Period. Also taste. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Inez was so quick to, like, to jump on that. <laughs> Love that, you, Katrina. <laughs> that said, every single scene with Ryan and Sophie had me even more drawn in. I loved the idea that the show was moving towards having two black women leads, and that this superhero show would have both of them playing this black women power couple. You see, I'm a black woman who's married to a black woman who also loves superheroes. We never, oh, ever... <laughs> We never, this is making me so happy, I'm just giggling. Um, We never ever thought a version of our relationship would play out in live action like this. The notion truly never occurred to us. It was simply something that would not exist. I immediately became protective of this show once the impossible became my reality. I found my way to this fandom early into season 3. I needed to know if others were as committed to this show in Wildmore as I was. What I found changed my life, literally. You want to believe you're not the only one. I mean, how could you be? But to see it, touch it, and know it. It's like finding a home. I found people who truly get me. No explanations or justifications necessary. And I found a bunch of black queer nerds to virtually commune with. Besides my wife, I've only ever encountered one or two other people I could say this about. Seriously. Home. More. This show helped me tap into passions I'd lost track of. I'm writing again. In all of the ways. I started drawing again. Oh, and I'm using the skills I've grown in my career in a way that doesn't feel like work. It's become fun again and motivating. Being around a bunch of creative and talented people doing the same thing is inspiring. This is how I feel about our podcast. Yeah, Very true. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we didn't learn any of these skills at work, more like college, <laughs> but this is resonating. It's hitting home. Like I, There's a lot about editing and whatnot that I didn't find enjoyable at all until we started mm-hmm. doing the podcast. Yeah, when it's your own show, it's super different. Yeah. Exactly. When we were invested, it's different, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's like we always wanted to do something, but Batwoman had to exist to finally get us there. And that's yeah. like 
Like we've said multiple times, it's such a huge compliment to the show. And in full candor, being exposed to Javisha is a lot of what's fueled this. Every time she speaks, I'm even more fueled to do or try something, because I'm the only one setting my limits. Yes. Now that the network powers that be are trying to prematurely take all that this show is and does from us, I feel a responsibility to fight to save it. Representation matters everywhere, and art reflects life. Activism yes. is not limited to policies. By definition, it includes campaigning to bring about both political and social change. The film and TV industry, which consumes dollars from black queer people, should save space for our community. So if campaigning to hashtag Save Batwoman does nothing more than make decision makers know what we want and what we expect, then this effort is worth it. May the next black lesbian superhero and queer actress playing her receive the flowers they deserve from their network. Hell yeah. I feel like that needs, uh, yeah, that I, needs I, I needed to clap that. That's <laughs> beautiful. Oh, I wow. I fully agree. This was so great. Oh, my God. Thank you so much to everyone who sent in messages. Thank you, Love seriously. This. And I fully agree with you, Katrina. Like, at the end of the day, these networks are working for us, you know? Yep. So they make content for us. They get their money from us. So it's their obligation to step the fuck up and listen to people. Period. And I love the part that art reflects life. I think that sums up a lot of things. It's just, why should the you know TV industry be different from life? Life is diverse. Why shouldn't TV be diverse? That's always my argument. Um, every time someone says, oh, this show is so work because only because it has queer and black characters. I'm like, no, that's life. Yeah. So thank you for participating in this with us, guys. We loved it, and we hope to have more stuff in the future for you. Yeah, this that has got end. to be that has got to be my favorite Arkham Archives moment so far. We are all just in awe and getting emotional, and I don't even know what to say. How to conclude that? I mean, they just <laughs> said everything for us. Yeah. Literally. So now that that's done, we will be back for some more hashtag save Batwoman content. So we hope you can stick around and that we can help each other uh, through this tough time. If you need to talk to us just on any social media, please feel free to do so. We're here to support each other. Once again, please go check the Save Batwoman agenda on Twitter and try to participate and share the tweets using the hashtag SaveBatwoman and hashtag HBOMaxSaveBatwoman. Like I said, if you want to talk to us, feel free to do so. We are at Arkham underscore archives on both Twitter and Instagram. Once again, thank you to the lovely people who participated in the show today. I think you really made the show and this yeah. was a really special moment. Absolutely. You're all very sweet. And it really made this episode extra special to record and share. Thank you for listening and see you soon. Bye. 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 Thank you, Bye. everyone. Bye. Thank you. Hashtag we save Batwoman. Hashtag save Batwoman. Hashtag save Batwoman. <laughs>